So I think it's no secret that I love K-beauty and I've been on this K-beauty journey for a while and that means I've tried a lot of products, some that have made a really big impression on me. So give this video a big thumbs up because today I thought it'd be really fun for me to revisit some of those old products that did make a big impression on me. Some products that I have absolutely loved but for whatever reason maybe I haven't used them in a while. I want to take a look at these products with fresh eyes and determine has my mind changed about some of my favorite classic K-Beauty products. So first up is Claire's Midnight Blue Calming Cream. So what did I think about this before? Well, I definitely really like this product. I think it's because when I first used it, it gave me immediate relief on my irritated skin. It really, really gave relief to my skin. And whenever I can get an immediate result from something, like I'm definitely impressed. And in fact, I actually have a full review of this product here on my channel. So what do I think about it now? Well, I have to be honest with you, my feelings on this has definitely cooled off uh, since I first tried this product. And well, why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One reason is definitely this is a very overhyped product. Overhyped, not just hyped, but personally, I think overhyped. Now, uh, this is probably because of Instagram culture, to be completely honest with you. I mean, the skincare community on Instagram has definitely embraced this and photographed this a lot. And I don't blame them because this is a beautiful product. The cornflower blue color of this cream is stunning. And no matter where you kind of fall on the spectrum of like aesthetic packaging, whether it's like the deciding factor for you or it makes no difference at all in your decision to purchase, at the end of the day, aesthetics do still catch our eye. Whether they play into the purchase or not, that's different, but it definitely does get your attention, right? That's not a bad thing, but it's definitely a product that gets a lot of attention and it's very popular. I also find the marketing on this to be really confusing. Um, honestly, this is the tube packaging, which I think is uh, just smarter all around, but it does come in a jar packaging as well, slightly smaller size. And I think that people, because that jar looks like a moisturizer, it looks like a tiny moisturizer. And I think people think this is a moisturizer. And in my experience, this doesn't have a lot of moisturizing capabilities. So it's kind of a popular but confusing product. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. This is a very solid ingredients list. Like, look, let's let's slow down for a second here because I'm kind of like, uh, marketing, da, da, da. This product works, okay? <laughs> it works. And that might be the most important factor of all. It does work. And it's a very solid ingredients list. This does have guazoline. Uh, again, another marketing thing here because they're really pushing guazoline as like the star ingredient. That is what makes the cream blue by the way that's what imparts the natural blue color but if you look at the ingredients list you'll quickly realize this is actually just really a Sika cream yeah it really is just a Sika cream um, there's some great ingredients in here we've got uh, peptides antioxidants we've got ceramides in here guazoline and a high amount of centella it is a product that works at the end of the day it's a very solid ingredients list happy to let you guys know as well that um, this does not have essential oils in it at all um, and no added fragrance now um they do use chamomile extract, but they're not using chamomile oil. So I was really pleased to see that on the ingredients list. But the reason that my, my feelings really have cooled over time is simply because there's just other products that do it better and faster too, in my opinion. And they're more well-rounded Sika creams too. Sika creams that can double as moisturizer. Sika creams that can give moisture and protection to skin. And this texture is so thin, it's so lightweight. It really doesn't add a lot of moisture to the skin. And I just find from my personal experience when my skin is irritated, I need that moisture and protection as well as the immediate soothing relief. And I've just found products that do it better. And quite frankly, I've found products that do it better for like less money too. This is a pretty expensive product. I mean, the 30 milliliter jar 
30 milliliters is a tiny amount and it's $25. Tiny product for a big price tag, right? This uh, tube packaging, which I find to be a lot more economical and I think that this size just makes more sense, 60 milliliters, this is $31 full retail. I just think that that's really expensive and um, I like this product. I still use it. I still think it's a good product. Don't get me wrong, it is a good product. But it is an overhyped product and I think it takes attention away from some of the better ones out there on the market. Okay, so next up is one of probably the most popular products ever in K-Beauty. This is the Cosrx Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. Okay, so what did I think about it then? Well, I absolutely loved this product. Now, this is not my first snail product. This was probably the second or third snail product that I've tried, but um, this is one of the snail products that I've repurchased over and over again. I mean, I've been using this product on and off for the last six years, so I definitely do have a deep abiding love for this product, and this has always kind of had a place in my routine. Quite frankly, when I really first kind of got into uh, K-Beauty, I got really interested interested in, well, I mean, I think we know I'm interested in ingredients, right? But I got really interested in ingredients and I sort of set my routine up so that there was always a snail spot. It didn't really matter what kind of product filled the snail slot, but I always wanted to have some step in my routine that contained a high amount of snail. That's changed over the years, but when I first started, I always like reserved a spot for snail in my uh, in my skincare routines. So what do I think about this now? Well, to be honest with you, I still like this. I still think that this is a very good product. Looking at this with more educated eyes, because here's the thing, the further you go along in your K-beauty journey, the smarter you're just gonna get about products, right? Especially if you like to read up on things like ingredients, you will gain more knowledge as you go further down the road. And looking at this with more educated eyes, I really like this ingredients list. It's very minimal. You guys know I like more minimal skincare products. And this is 96% snail, that's a high amount of snail. The other ingredients here are mostly just hydrators and soothers, nothing too like fantastic, but definitely very uh, mild ingredients list, no added fragrance, no essential oils, no alcohol. This is pretty much like pure snail, a little bit of soothing, some hydration, and that's it. And I love that about this formula. Now, when I first got into K-Beauty, snail was super, super popular, right? Um, I think snail is still popular, but it, not like it used to be. Um, and for lack of a better word, there was definitely a uh, trend around exotic. That's the word I didn't want to use. I just don't know a better one for it. Uh, there was a lot of excitement around exotic ingredients. Ingredients you wouldn't find in Western skincare, things like snail, uh, donkey milk, bee venom, kind of slightly scary sounding ingredients. And it was definitely a rite of passage, like when you first got into K-Beauty, to try one of these like slightly scary ingredients. Like, hey, I'm brave enough, I'll do it. Like when in Rome, like when in Paris, you eat uh, escargot, right? It's kind of like that feeling, like I'm gonna do this. Um, so for me, it was really exciting, right? Because this was like, this was my first exotic ingredient, uh, snail. And I absolutely loved it. It did a lot for my skin. But hindsight is 2020, right? It probably did a lot for my skin because coming, f uh, you know, like coming into K-Beauty from what I was doing before, <laughs> believe it or not, what I was doing before was washing my face, putting on eye cream and moisturizer. That's it. <laughs> I didn't do any kind of toning. I didn't do any kind of anything else. So um, for me, just having a purely hydrating product like this was like mind blowing and it was a revelation to me. Um, just hydration in general was a revelation uh, to my skin uh, when I started to get into K-Beauty and really wanting to do a little bit more for my skincare routine. So this made a big impression on me because it was new. It was new. As you know, I'm, I'm a lot more experienced in skincare now. Looking at this product now, is it really that impressive? Um, you know, it's good. It's a good product. Um, it's hard to get really excited about it, I guess, at this point, um, just because I've 
discovered other hydrators that you know do 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 the job just as well if not better other snail products that I also enjoy at the end of the day this is a well formulated product it's great for all skin types it's totally a classic I think everybody should at least try it um, I do think that this is probably one of the best products offered by Cosrx it's such a great product it's a good price but am I as excited about it as I used to be no, but it is a very good product. Do you want to see my dog? Piper. Hey, Piper. Oh. <gasps> Piper Ann, hi. Hey, sweetie. Going to sleep? Okay. We won't bother you anymore. So next up is another Cosrx product. You know, Cosrx, I think for many of us has played a really big part, especially in our early skincare journey because they're so affordable and they've just got really great products. So this is their Good Morning Low pH Gel Cleanser. You guys know that I really like this cleanser and I've repurchased this one a lot. So what did I think about it then? Well, I loved it. I think I just gave it away. Love this cleanser, mostly because it was my first low pH cleanser and that really blew my mind mind and opened my eyes up to that concept of gentler cleansing. Um, I've definitely refined that, um, that, that philosophy of mine of really going gentle with your cleansers much more since, you know, first starting this, but you can definitely trace it back to uh, deciding to go for low pH cleansers. And this was the first one for me, big deal, right? Um, this is also a very effective cleanser for being incredibly affordable. This is usually about $10. And for somebody, you know, who's been into K-Beauty for for a while, K-Beauty is a, a little bit more accessible these days than it was even six, seven years ago, but this has always been a very accessible cleanser, even for somebody who has to order their skincare um, from the internet. This is definitely something that I've always been able to find, which I, I appreciate that. Affordability and accessibility are important. So what do I think about this now? Well, um, I still think this is a great product, but I think that this product is no longer for me. The reason that I say that is because when I first started this cleanser, my skin was very different. It was oily and it was pretty acne prone. And that's just not the case anymore. As the years have gone by, my skin has changed. I've gotten a lot more dry in my U zone. I still deal with oil in my T zone, but I treat my skin a little bit more dry dehydrated than I ever would treat it as oily. And this type of cleanser is just not going to serve me anymore. And in fact, as my skin started to change to a little bit more on the dry side, this cleanser did start to feel drying for me. And in fact, I actually switched over to a similar cleanser that I do feel maintains a little bit more moisture on the skin, and that is the Purito uh, Defense Barrier pH Cleanser. This is also a tea tree based cleanser, but it's not quite as drying as the Cosrx because it, it includes a hydrator royal jelly. However, going even further than that, my skin's just not acne prone anymore. I just don't really deal with active or ongoing pimples and acne on my skin. So it just doesn't make sense for me to treat my skin in that manner. And that is really what these two cleansers do. These are great for acne prone skin because it's got tea tree oil in it. And it's also this particular Cosrx one has a salicylic acid causing called beta tin salicylate, which is great for treating pimples. It's just not the right cleanser for me anymore. And I'm actually kind of like currently on my K-Beauty cleanser search to find the right one for me now. These served me so well in the past, but now we're in the present, we're looking at the future, and I'll probably be leaving these cleansers behind. Next up is the Maison Snail Repair Eye Cream. I have purchased so many jars of this and tubes, I can't tell you how many times I've bought this. Maison is a really affordable brand and it generally is a rather accessible brand too. You can find these at most K-Beauty shops, which I, I always like a, a good product that you can easily reorder. Now this really served me at the beginning of my skincare journey and I've definitely repurchased this throughout the years. And I just really liked that this was very affordable, as I said earlier, accessible, easy to repurchase. And I felt like it just did the trick for me. You know, for me, an eye cream is really just a preventative measure that I like to take for well aging. I don't like the word anti-aging just because it sounds like you either are stopping time or going back in time. And we both know that that's just not 
we're just it's just not possible i wish it was but it's not uh well aging is a little bit more about like taking care of what you have and giving yourself the best shot you know going forward as you age throughout the years and i i kind of like that philosophy just a little bit better it's a little bit more relaxed so that's what eye creams really um i want them to do i just want them to hydrate moisturize and um, preserve the eye area so what do i think about this cream now well, I actually have to tell you, I actually still like this, and I even started using this cream again recently. It's just a really dang good eye cream. Now, I think that some people feel that if it's so affordable, it must not be very good or not have a lot of active ingredients. And honestly, this is a pretty well-formulated eye cream, all things considered. It is 80% snail. Remember, snail played a big part in my early skincare journey. I love snail. Um, snail's got some great um, uh, wrinkle prevention benefits, very great hydrator for the skin. Um, it's also quite reparative for your skin as well. This also has niacinamide, a great uh, well aging or anti-aging ingredient, right? Um, niacinamide, really great for the eye area as well as this has a few peptides in it. And it also has adenosine, another great uh, well aging ingredient, right? Great for preventing fine lines. This is free of essential oils, it's free of fragrance, and it has no alcohol in it. Yes, you gotta look for alcohol in eye creams if you can believe it. I've definitely seen alcohol in eye creams. It's a little annoying, honestly, but this is such a great ingredients list. I mean, I still, I, I knew nothing about ingredients when I first started. Looking at the ingredients today, I'm very impressed with this eye cream. The texture of this is something that I still really like. This is a cream texture, but it's so lightweight and very hydrating on the skin. It absorbs really quickly and it doesn't weigh your eye area down. You know, that skin around your eye is much thinner. And I know personally, I feel very like if the eye cream gets heavy, it feels heavy on my eye area. And as somebody who likes to layer different skincare products, I don't want a heavy eye cream, you know what I mean? So this actually, this plays so well with other layers without adding a lot of weight or grease to the eye area, it plays so well with makeup, um, but it really does the trick too. Honestly, I've been using this for so long and I really do think that it has helped me age <laughs> well, right? Um, I definitely think that my eye area is looking a lot more fresh than it, than it, it might had I not used this cream. So I do think that this is a great cream. Now, let me tell you, I don't think that this will work for dark circles. If you're really looking for an affordable eye cream for dark circles, I, eh, not really this one just really doesn't do that um i never really felt like this brightened my eye area all that much but i do feel that it really moisturized hydrated and protected the eye area and i definitely do feel that it has prevented fine lines i really like this eye cream like i said i started using it again a couple of weeks ago and honestly this is probably the best eye cream available in k-beauty uh, for a budget definitely so i hope you guys enjoyed going back in time with me to explore some of my old favorite products and see if i have changed my mind on them some of them i definitely have but honestly a lot of these really have stood the test of time so let me know in the comment box below what's like an old school product that you uh have used for a long time do you still like it or maybe your opinion has changed let me know in the comment box below if you're not already subscribed to my channel but you absolutely love k-beauty like what are you doing with your life please hit subscribe um, but in all seriousness please consider subscribing i release two new skincare videos all about k-beauty every single week and don't forget to turn on notifications if you're not part of the notification squad uh, you will get notified when i drop that new video so i hope you guys are having a wonderful day i absolutely can't wait to see you in the next video and we'll talk soon bye